changed a little bit, at least in Tel Aviv. Um, so I'm going to depart from my prepared remarks a little bit because David gave me such a great uh, lead-in to this uh, Reading of the Dead, as he called it. I love the title, Reading of the Dead. I just called it Superstars of the Past or Giants of Fail. <laughs> But uh, the way that uh, came about is we were talking about the advantage of the incumbent with respect to data. So the incumbent has some data, and that could give it some sort of barrier as opposed to, to prevent entry of some sort. But I think it's not just data. There's all sorts of advantage the incumbent has. There's an incumbency advantage in general. In this context, you've got potentially the raw data. Uh, you've got the data that's been organized into information. You have the information organized into knowledge, and the knowledge is in understanding. Uh, if you are an incumbent and you don't have that knowledge, that information, that understanding, it puts you at a disadvantage. So what do you do? You go out and you try to hire somebody who has that kind of, uh, that kind of knowledge, and uh, that can help uh, mitigate that, uh, that cost. But there is a bit of an exception to this incumbency advantage. Sometimes there's a new technology that comes along and you have a firm that uh, masters that technology and thereby can unseat the incumbent. Okay, so we can think of something like the taxi industry and Uber. You've got the taxi industry that's using the same technology for many years. Along comes a company with some new technology. Even though they don't know much about urban transport, they're able to overcome or, or at least seriously impact uh, the incumbent by utilizing this technology. And that's just one company, but then there are many, many, many of them. And I went through the reading of the dead. I'll just do that very quickly here. You can look at the uh, uh, search engines, AOL, Incomy, Site, Lycos, all of this, uh, Yahoo. Yahoo. Uh, what happened? Well, Google comes along, and what Google says is, we want to exploit the link structure of the internet. Now, that's expensive because you have to download the entire internet into your computing environment, and then you can utilize the information about the link structure to improve the search capability. That's exactly what, uh, what Google did way back in uh, 1998 when they were first, uh, first started, and of course now everybody does that. But uh, to go on the list, Atari, Blackberry, they had indirect network effects because of their operating system that can save them. Uh, Blockbuster, technological change, videotape the DVD, that went okay, DVD to streaming, no, they lost. Uh, Kodak, I mean, Kodak is pretty incredible because it had a very, very dominant position in photography and the film and the developing, the entire ecosystem. I did a little consulting for Kodak way, 20 years ago, and uh, they saw the iceberg. They knew the iceberg was there, they just couldn't turn the ship, okay? And this is true, I think, of many of these other examples, Polaroid, Another great example, MySpace, direct ne network effects, Nokia, they had indirect network effects through the operating system, but they did not manage the operating system very well. It was open source, it fragmented into 200 different versions, and you had this incredible uh, Tower of Babel, which was very uh, disadvantageous to the uh, incumbents when the iPhone kind of came out. How could they build anything that was that was could compete against the iPhone? iPhone because they all had such small scale. Well, Google rode in on a white horse and said, "We have Android," and uh, they said, "Well, how do we know you're going to uh, stick with it?" And they said, "We'll make it open source. We'll make it open source because it's like posting a bond. If you don't like what we're doing, you can do something else. So you're binding yourself to uh, apply." good stewardship over that particular ecosystem by that uh, activity. Uh, Radio Shack, now that many of you are too young to remember Radio Shack, but at one time they were the biggest seller of personal computers in the United States, believe it or not. Uh, they, uh, they had a data advantage in a sense. They had a database of all their customers. They went bankrupt a couple of years ago bankruptcy judge said, let's sell the database. It's worth tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, but they had one little problem that in their uh, licensing terms, they said, we do not sell a database. We do not sell a database of our customers. And uh, the question is, well, they said that when they're alive, but what happens when they're dead? You know, how can that promise follow them through the grave? I don't know. Silicon Graphics, Sun, Xerox. 
Xerox is an incredible example where they were had this absolute patent advantage. They controlled the whole ecosystem in terms of the office supplies, and yet uh, they, they had the same problem. They disappeared, no longer around, uh, were acquired by a Japanese uh, firm, as I recall. So uh, the point is, you can look at all these examples, and they didn't really do misbehavior. I think David suggested they might be desperate and try to prevent uh, themselves from losing the market. It was really more a case in, in all these examples, so far as I can tell, where they were just uh, displaced by technology. And actually, I think that is the threat that the big five firms face. It's not that there's going to be some onrush of competition emerging from somewhere. It's really the case that there'll be some changes in the technology to make it much, much cheaper, or you can provide a much, much uh, more cost-effective solution to what people are looking for. So just judging based on, on history, I think that's, uh, that's what we'll see in, in the next uh, next uh, decade or so. Um, oh yeah, one last thing you can do, just for fun, go to Wikipedia, and in Wikipedia they have uh, pages called Amazon failures, Apple failures, Facebook failures, Google failures, and Microsoft failures. People have compiled a list of all the ways those companies have screwed up, and it's quite important to remember that that happens all the time, and if you have too many screw-ups, then it can be a real problem. For example, I've heard it said, maybe at this conference somebody said, well, it's because of the antitrust enforcement against Microsoft that Google and other companies were able to get it. But did you say that? I was making it. I was making it. Ah, I was making it. Okay, well, he's not here. That's not me. Okay, okay. So, so, uh, so the, the point is, you could make a counter argument. And the counter argument would be that it was actually Microsoft that screwed up. They didn't need an excuse of this antitrust action because look at what happened during the uh, 2000s. Window mobiles, that's why Google started Android, by the way, is because of the potential threat from uh, Microsoft who said they were working on a mobile platform, never got out of time, never had a good hardware base, didn't run on other people's uh, systems very well. Uh, Bing, which I think was dramatically underfunded. You look at the uh, commission, the, the, the EC reports, they say, well, Microsoft put in whatever, three quarters of a billion this year and a billion this year. But at the same time, Google was putting in seven, eight, ten billion per year on, on its system. So they just didn't fund it in a, in a way that was sensible. Uh, they didn't, were very late to the table with respect to collaboration when we came out with Google Docs. So you have multi author documents, which are very, very convenient, but they didn't want to mess with Microsoft Office because that was a crown jewel. You don't take the crown jewel and then change it just because some little dicky company over here does it. Uh, so they couldn't do that. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, just the whole organization. When you have these products, which are your prime, critical, important, central products, they gain a status which makes them almost untouchable one thing we're well aware of and are uh, trying to uh, uh, avoid, uh, but I think Microsoft kind of succumbed to that, and if you were doing Windows or the operating system, that was great, and everything else was second order. So that's my quick uh, read on that. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll just stop at this point. I've got a few more things from my prepared remarks, but we'll have a chance to talk about those in a few minutes.